and welcome to another edition of Frequently Asked Questions in Noise, Vibration, and Acoustics. In this video series, we answer the questions that we get most often from clients and through inquiries via our website. My name is Simon Edwards, an acoustical engineer with HGC Engineering, and today's question is, what do property managers need to know when addressing a noise complaint from a neighboring suite? We get calls from property managers and condo boards every day asking about this type of question, asking if there's a type of deficiency, and if so, of course, how to solve it. During these calls, we'll often ask about the nature of the noise complaints. Do the residents hear music and voices, or do they hear footsteps and furniture being moved on the floor above? The purpose of asking these questions is to classify the complaint as airborne sound transmission, structure-borne sound transmission, or both. Airborne sound transmission is likely hear how you're hearing my voice right now through your speakers, or how you'd hear somebody speaking to you from across the street. It's sound traveling through the air from the source of the noise to the listener. Typical sources of airborne sound transmission in suites are things like voices and music and other high-frequency sounds. Structure-borne sound transmission is how you might hear a weight dropped in the gym several floors away. It's sound traveling through the structure to the listener's room and re-radiating off the room to the listener. Typical sources of structure-borne sound complaints in, in condos are things like footsteps and furniture being moved around and items being dropped on the floor. Now, it's important to note that airborne sound transmission and structure-borne sound transmission are completely independent of one another. A floor ceiling may be very good at preventing airborne sound transmission between two spaces, while at the same time, uh, there can be a large amount of structure-borne sound transmission between the same two spaces. Airborne sound transmission is measured using a standardized test called an STC test or a sound transmission class test. An STC test is conducted by placing a speaker on one side of a demising assembly and measuring sound on both sides of the assembly, as well as reverberation and ambient. The result is an STC rating, and the higher the STC rating, the better the demising assembly at preventing sound from traveling between the spaces. Or, in other words, the higher the STC rating, less airborne sound travels from A to B. Similarly, structure-borne sound transmission is measured by conducting a standardized test called an impact insulation class test, or IIC test. The IIC rating is calculated by placing a tapping machine on the floor above and measuring several tapping machine positions in the space below as well as ambient reverberation. As with STC, a higher IIC rating means that less structure-borne sound is transmitted between the two spaces. Since these indices are not correlated to one another. A floor ceiling can have a very high STC rating or a very low IIC rating, or have both ratings be high or both low at the same time. Now it's important to note that STC and IIC tests measure only direct sound transmission through a demising assembly, and these are often conducted in a lab. When we conduct measurements in the field, we are not only measuring direct sound transmission through a demising assembly, but also indirect sound transmission around the demising assembly, through things like a common floor footprint, or through common duct work, through holes in the caulking, and other indirect sound transmission paths. When you're conducting these types of tests and subsequent ratings are called ASTC and AIIC ratings. And when you're conducting these types of tests, you're measuring both direct sound transmission through the demising assembly and indirect sound transmission around the demising assembly. These ratings represent the total amount of sound traveling between two rooms. To give you an example, a wall can be designed with a very high STC rating, but when it's being constructed, the drywall contractor may have forgotten to add caulking above and below the wall. When measured in the field, much of the sound is going to travel through these holes in the caulking and the resulting ASTC rating is going to be quite low, despite the wall being designed with a high STC rating. To put this in, the, in uh, an analogous to light, if there's a crack in the wall where a lot of light can get through, even if most of the wall, wall is well constructed, the room next door may be lit up by all that light. It's important to note that just because a resident can hear sound from the neighboring suite, it does not mean that the level of sound transmission is excessive or in violation of building code. 
Some people are surprised to hear, unfortunately for them, that the sound that they can hear coming from their neighbor's suite is not considered excessive in standard building construction. In Canada and the US, airborne sound transmission, STC and ASTC ratings, are requirements in the international and national building codes, as well as various provincial building codes. The international building code in the US also includes similar requirements for IIC and AIIC ratings. However, in Canada, the national building code and provincial building codes only include IIC recommendations. This can introduce some gray area for how to assess an IIC test result in Canada, which can sometimes be sorted out by including an IIC requirement in the condo documentation. Otherwise, an acoustical engineer can subjectively interpret these IIC results based on other international similar standards and guidelines. If a resident can hear sound coming from their neighbor's suite, the level of sound transmission can be measured by conducting either an ASTC test or an AIIC test or both. The subsequent ASTC and AIIC ratings can be co compared to building code requirements and recommendations or other relevant criteria for the geographical area. In some limited contexts where the measured sound transmission in the field is well below what was expected, we can determine or gauge the mode of failure based on the type of assembly, our experience with that assembly, and the frequencies of failure, such as large gaps in the lamination between a panel of drywall and a poured concrete wall, or holes in the caulking. In other scenarios, in the event that a test in the field yields a much lower result than expected, we need to open up the wall to determine exactly what was built and how that compares to the design drawings. That's our question for today. If you have any other questions that you'd like to see answered here, please feel free to reach out. We look forward to seeing you again next time.